Okay, so now we're going to work on problems 9 to 13. I'm probably only going to get to a couple problems in this video, but I just want to break it down in a way that makes it as simple as possible for you guys to understand. These problems tend to look scarier than they actually are. So problem number 9, um, we're dealing with exponents, 3x squared, y cubed, and then they're all in the parentheses to the third power. So this exponent applies to all of these pieces. So what I like to do when I have a problem that looks like this is literally just write it out. So it would be 3 cubed, then it would be x to the squared cubed, and then it will be y cubed to the third power. So I'm going to deal with them one at a time. So 3 cubed means 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. So I already have my first part of my answer. So I can look at A and B and eliminate it because only C and D have 27 in there in, in the answer. Okay? So then I'm going to go ahead and move on to x squared and then to the third power. So anytime, that means I would be doing x squared times x squared times x squared. Anytime that I'm multiplying and I have the same base, which I do, they're all x's, I just add the exponent. So it's the same as saying x to the 2 plus 2 plus 2. So it would be x to the 6th power. Okay, and then we're going to go to this last part, y to the third power, and then it's all also going to be to the third power. So we're doing y cubed times y cubed times y cubed. Again, they all have the same base as y, so you just add the exponents, 3 plus 3 plus 3. So it'll be y to the 3, 6, 9 power. So now I have the three parts of my answer. So it should be 27x to the 6th, y to the ninth power. And so the answer would be D. Let's go on to the next problem. So now it says if 5, this minus x, and they're all under the square root is equal to 4, then x is equal to what? So what I will do is I'm just going to write out the problem. 5 minus x equals 4. So then we're just trying to figure out what x would be equal to. So all you have to do is just take your answer choices and plug it in for x to see if it makes sense. So let's take negative 21, for example. So instead of writing 5 minus x, we're going to do 5 minus negative 21 is equal to 4. Anytime you're minus a negative, that becomes a positive, an addition sign. So 5 plus 21 is 26. So the square root of 26 is equal to 4. There is no perfect square root of 26, so we know that it's not going to be equal to a whole number 4. So we know that A is not the answer. So then let's go ahead and try negative 11. So again, I'm going to write the problem. 5 minus x is equal to 4. Instead of writing 5 minus x, I'm going to write 5 minus negative 11 is equal to 4. I know that when I have a minus a negative sign, that becomes one big plus sign. 5 plus 11 is 16. The square root of 16 is 4. 4 is equal to 4. So B is my answer. The answer is negative 11. So we're going to go to the next problem. So the next problem, I'm going to rewrite it. It's x minus 1 over x is equal to 20. They want us to find what x is equal to. So when I look at this problem, I don't like it for many reasons, but one of the reasons why I don't like it is because of this looking like a fraction. So I like to get rid of fractions so that it looks a less intimidating, looks less scary. So if you ever want to get rid of a fraction, what you do is you multiply both sides of the equation by the denominator. The denominator is whatever is on the bottom of the fraction. So if I want to get rid of a fraction, I'm going to multiply both sides by x. So when I multiply x times x over 1 over x, these x's cancel out, and I'm left with the numerator, x minus 1. 
and then 20 times x is 20x. All right, so now I got rid of my fraction by multiplying both sides by the denominator. And so now I just have one long line and there's x's on each side, so I just go ahead and solve this equation. So we know when we're trying to solve for x, we're trying to find what x is equal to. We need to get all the x's to one side and all the numbers on the other side. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and I can subtract one x from both sides. These x's cancel each other out and I'm left with negative one is equal to 20x minus one x, which is equal to 19x. Again, I wanna get the x by itself. What's causing the x to not be by itself right now? The 19, I wanna get rid of the 19 by dividing both sides by 19. Those 19s cancel out and you're left with x is equal to negative one over 19. It also can be written one over negative 19 equals x. This is the exact same thing. So the answer will be C. X is equal to one over negative 19.